Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Have I got your attention now? Lego is arguably the single greatest toy of all time. Don't get me wrong, I love my Transformers, but I would wager money that at some point during your life you have played with the little plastic bricks. It doesn't matter if you're building a Lego set or building some ungodly creation from the legendary Lego bucket. Building Lego is pure, unadulterated fun. So naturally, when somebody came up with the genius idea of combining Lego with another popular form of entertainment, video games, it was always going to be a winning formula. These games are so successful that the studio that makes them, Traveler's Tales, has almost exclusively made LEGO games for the past 20 years. I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It also probably doesn't hurt that most of these LEGO games are based on very famous franchises like Indiana Jones, Star Wars, and Batman, just to name a few. But despite the apparent success and popularity of these games, it's not common to see a LEGO game in a greatest games of all time list. Well, there's a good reason for that. LEGO games simply aren't created to stand amongst gaming titans like Red Dead Redemption 2, Metal Gear Solid, Halo, or Bioshock. Instead, they act as major stepping stones in every gamer's journey into the world of video games, and act as gateway games so that young gamers can one day move onto more in-depth and mature experiences. LEGO games are created to be outgrown, but that doesn't mean they should be forgotten. Today, I want to give LEGO games their due, because while they not be among the deepest or most intricate video games, they are responsible for introducing an entire generation of kids to the wide world of gaming and continue to do so to this very day. My first video game wasn't Mario, Pokemon, Spyro, Halo, or Sonic. It was a LEGO game. Specifically, it was LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga on the PlayStation 3. I'm talking about the OG fat model too. Damn, I wish my family still had that thing. That game also happened to be my first exposure to Star Wars, believe it or not. It was a formative experience to say the least. I distinctly remember that my nan had just bought a PlayStation 3, which looking back at how expensive those original models were, I still can't quite believe she bought that thing. <laughs> my family was gathered around the TV and we were all taking turns playing the Phantom Menace levels. Specifically, I remember playing co-op with my dearly beloved cousin that night and having the time of my life. I was atrocious at the game of course, but because the controls were so simple, I was running around flipping and swinging a lightsaber. It was an easy game to pick up and it started an obsession that I've never been quite able to get rid of. The PlayStation was of course at my nan's, so I didn't get to play it very often which just made it more special. Over time we got more games for the console, Motorstorm became a quick favourite of mine, but I was mostly interested in the Lego games we slowly collected. After LEGO Star Wars came LEGO Batman and then LEGO Indiana Jones. I spent hours playing those games solo and in co-op with various members of my family over the years. But when I finally got a Wii in my family home, it got serious. Of course, we got our own copy of LEGO Batman, but many more LEGO games followed. Harry Potter Years 1-4, to LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars, a severely underrated gem, LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, LEGO Harry Potter Years 5-7, to LEGO Batman 2, DC Super Heroes, LEGO Lord of the Rings, my first exposure to Lord of the Rings was the LEGO game. I experienced that entire story for the first time in LEGO form, which is kind of wild when I think about it now. I didn't play Super Mario Galaxy or The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. My family Wii was almost exclusively a LEGO gaming machine. I honestly don't remember playing any other games on it, except Transformers, but that game was also made by Traveler's Tales, so does that really even count? Oh, and Wii Sports. But who didn't play that game? Safe to say, I was heartbroken when I discovered that LEGO Marvel Super Heroes wouldn't be released on the Wii. But luckily, my family laptop was powerful enough to run it, so I moved my LEGO game obsession to PC. LEGO games introduced me to PC gaming. Insane. Soon, my obsession with Transformers and my first to play Transformers Fall of Cybertron drove me to save up for and eventually buy my own Xbox 360, a little box that I still own to this very day, and it is still my favourite video game console of all time. 
And even though the 360 greatly expanded my taste in games, LEGO games were still a mainstay even as a teenager. I played hits like the LEGO Movie Video Game and LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham on the 360. And although I didn't actually own LEGO Jurassic World or LEGO Marvel's Avengers, my buddy had them on Xbox One and I played those games to death at his place. He actually got Jurassic World the same day that the movie came out. So we watched Jurassic World in the cinema and then we went back to his place and played through the whole movie in the Lego game. That was a good day. Not to mention that alongside all of this, I had an R4 fire card for my DS loaded with handheld Lego games. Even when I moved on the 3DS, I still adored Lego City Undercover The Chase Begins and I ate up the Lego Ninjago games. You were a real one if you played Ninjoids and Shadow of Ronin. Even by the time I had bought a PS4 and moved on to much bigger games like Uncharted and Batman Arkham Knight, I still bought and played LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens when it came out. I must admit though, after that game, I lost interest in LEGO games. I skipped every entry after The Force Awakens and for years paid no attention to LEGO games. But then LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga came out, and like a lot of others, I was sucked back into the wacky world of LEGO games and this time on PS5. Almost 15 years after I had first played the complete saga, it was a true full circle moment. Even after all these years later, after I have played some of the greatest games of all time, I still find myself going back to LEGO games. Hell, I recently picked up LEGO Jurassic World and Avengers for dirt cheap on the PlayStation Store, and I've been playing through those games again and having a blast. Playing those games again was my inspiration behind making this video. Elden Ring? Nah. LEGO City Undercover. As you've no doubt picked up on, LEGO games were a major influence in my gaming journey. They were there at the start, and almost two decades later they are still present in my gaming rotation. Is it nostalgia that brings me back to them? Almost certainly. <laughs> While I would argue that the presentation and humour of these games, especially from the era when the characters did not speak, is excellent in most regards, the gameplay is quite basic in comparison. Broken down to its simplest form, a LEGO game is a beat-em-up puzzle game. Later games added open world elements, and occasionally you'll find some levels incorporate unique gameplay elements, like the pod racer level from the complete saga. The Skywalker Saga recently broke this tradition by adding a melee combat combo system and third-person shooter gameplay into the equation, among other innovations to the LEGO formula. But despite the game making some great strides forward, the gameplay remains as simple as ever. You also cannot die, and you cannot be forced to replay a section if you fail. Well, except for the Master File level in the complete saga, but that experience is too traumatic for me to talk about. <laughs> But a LEGO game's simplicity is not a flaw, it's what makes the game so great. Everybody has to learn how to play video games at some point. There was a time where we all got stuck on a title screen because we didn't know what the hell the L3 button was. Simple concepts like operating character and camera controls simultaneously can take some time to get used to for first timers. You can't overwhelm first time gamers with stuff like that straight away. You can't give a six year old Dark Souls and expect him to have a good time. Every Everybody needs an entry point into gaming, and I believe that LEGO games best serve this purpose for a lot of people. There is a game to cater to everyone, Batman fans, Star Wars fans, Lord of the Rings fans, the list goes on. Younger individuals can start their journey into gaming with characters and worlds they are familiar with in an accessible and enjoyable format. You get a little taste of everything too, melee combat, puzzles, racing sections, open world exploration. LEGO games are very much a gateway drug into the world wide world of gaming. The LEGO game to Resident Evil 4 pipeline is real, believe me, I've experienced it. Naturally, we all grow up and start to desire more developed and mature experiences, so we eventually leave behind childish LEGO games and move on to stuff like Halo and God of War. When you start to play true AAA video games, something like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes seems stupid in comparison, but that's okay because they have already served their purpose. Besides, give it another decade and 
you will probably find yourself going back to them and truly appreciating what they did for you. Lego games are special because they are made to be outgrown. They are a guiding hand into the world of gaming that slowly walk you into the ocean rather than throwing you straight in. I'm sure that I share the experience I just recounted with more than a few people and it is a testament to the quality and impact of these silly little Lego games. What I'm trying to say is that Lego games deserve every bit of credit and respect that is thrown their way, because the truth is people don't often realize how fundamental games like these often are in shaping their future gaming preferences and experiences. Without Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, I would have never gone on to experience Red Dead Redemption 2, plain and simple. It warms my heart to see that these games are still being made and are still introducing young kids to the world of gaming. Who will one day move beyond the plastic bricks and into violence and bloodshed. On second thought, maybe we shouldn't have gone past Lego games. I've spoken my piece. Now, I want to hear your experiences. Did any of you guys share a similar path into gaming, or am I crazy for giving this much credit to LEGO games of all things? Regardless, let me know in the comments below. What was your first LEGO game? Do you have a favorite? Do you still play them? I want to know. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video.